FM. Radio has never been better. What is up? Hey guys, welcome to the movie show on your favorite O-R-S-P-S. and your one and only ORSPS. <laughs> cool. Your one know, and only. You've never heard that before, have you? Mm? Online radio station podcasting service. I'm Sash. My name's Ryan. And this week, <gasps> who done it? Well, we'll see how they run it. Okay, now wait. On how they wait, before it. we start the show. Well, we started the show technically already, but before we continue with the show. Okay. So at the end of this movie, see how they run. The main character, who's played by Sam Rockwell, turns around and speaks directly to the camera, breaks the fourth wall and says, don't spoil it for others. Oh, so yes. we are going to honor that request and we are not going to talk about who killed. Yes. Adrian Brody's character. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you're not going to know. You have to watch the film, but we are going to talk about this film. I actually forgot about that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I totally would have broken the fifth wall. <laughs> the fifth wall. So it's a 2022 mystery comedy. It's one hour and 38 minutes long. It's directed by Tom George, who is actually not a well known director. He's a British director. And when I searched other projects that he's done, it's mainly British TV series. So there's one called This Country. And um, there's an actor. To Charlie Cooper, who's in, he plays the very tall, skinny um, theater Dennis. dude. Yes, Dennis. Yeah. So he is in this country along with his sister. They play. It's like a reality reality mm. show. Yeah. And then when when he so they obviously got the script and they were wanting to make the film. At first, um, Hugh Grant and Kira Knightley were supposed to be cast as the two. So Saoirse Ronan and Sam Rockwell's character. Personally, though, I'm glad it didn't go that way. Not that I have anything against um, Kira Knightley and Hugh Grant, but I just feel like it would have been a very different film if they mm. if they hadn't gone with Saoirse Ronan and yeah. Sam Rockwell. And then yeah. the, once they the the, the I think. First 20th Century Fox wanted to make the film. Then it kind of fell through. Then Disney bought shares of 20th Century Fox and then made it. That's why in the beginning you have, um, I think it's called Fox Searchlight. Okay. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then they started casting. And they the first person to th- that they casted was Saoirse Ronan. And then obviously the cast got very it had a lot of like big names in it. I mean, you've got Saoirse Ronan, Adrian Brody, you've got Sam Rockwell. Like it's it's big, I big reco- actors. I didn't recognize anybody. You didn't? No. Okay, I'm- except for uh, Adrian, Saoirse. Adrian, and Saoirse Ronan. Right? I, didn't, I didn't even know it was her. To be to be honest, okay, I with think you. I know her very well as an yeah. actress because she's Irish, and I was yeah. just like, <gasps> her accent is awesome. Yeah, her accent is awesome, and she uses it in this. But then what happened was the director Tom he actually started freaking out because he's not a he's quite a small town director. If I could not and nothing, I mean his directing is brilliant, but he hadn't really done anything big. He was mm. kind of more like the British television series yeah, right. scene, so he was kind of freaking out. So he contacted Charlie Cooper and said to him, please please, would you come on this project with me? Because they've obviously worked together and apparently they're friends. So he said to him, please, will you come on and just be like my my like backup to, because obviously he was quite nervous to to have this like all-star cast and work with this and all-star cast. you're supposed to know what you look like, you know what you're doing. Yeah, because you know. you're the director. So, But I personally mm. think he did a brilliant job. I loved this movie. Mm. It, honestly, it could be my favorite murder mystery mm. film. It had a very... Uh, Wes Anderson yes, feel. That's it. I felt like I was watching it. It was so nice. I was like, when we first started, I was just like... Did Wait, Wes Anderson is this a Wes Anderson? <laughs> is this a Wes Anderson film? And Saoirse Ronan and Adrian Brody are both uh, two actors to have acted in a lot of Wes Anderson oh, films. So like the fact that they were in it as well, but just everything. I loved it. And the comedy. The comedy was so good. I wonder if it's a Tom, like like if, if the Wes Anderson look and feel is a thing of his or if that was sort of the, the inspiration, sort of the... the yeah, th- I know I when he said uh, okay the two films that he suggested to the actors to watch I personally haven't watched them but it's The Big Lebowski and The Death of Stalin so those are the two films that he he suggested to the cast Were to watch Wes Anderson I have no idea it's a good question I will check but I think they it was specifically from a, a comedy perspective because obviously comedy was was the heavy thing in this film it was like I think that's why I enjoyed it so much because yeah, like the comedy was, mm. it was, 
The comedy was so good. It honestly was so good. No, um, the Big Lebowski was directed by Ethan and Joel Cohen. Okay. And then the death of... I don't know if it was maybe from a... Because like his cinematic style was very Wes Anderson, but from mm. a comedy perspective... Oh, the colors, the... Sure, I was just like... It really did feel... The production. Yeah, no, the, the death of Stalin the also... The shots, n- not, not so much the... The cinematography part. So yeah, more the, the sets. Shots, it's more like the colors, the complementary colors and all of that. Suppose even the, the humor in a way, because Wes Anderson does yeah. do that like weird dark quirky? humor in a way. Yeah, quirky quir- humor, yeah. Quirky do- yeah, the dark humor. Yeah. yeah. But I loved how just the whole way they did the film and this film, it has so many nods to real life. So, for example... In in this film, so it's about just a quick like synopsis. It's about a theater production called The Mouse Trap, which is an actual Agatha. I think it is an Agatha Christie. Yes, theater production. Okay, cool. Yes, and it's it's it, you can you it happened in theater, so you can, people have gone to watch The Mouse Trap in theater, and then um, this was the so within the film right when the film starts they they mention that it's the 100 100th performance of the mouse trap they still that's why they celebrate yeah, right? That's right that's right then throughout the movie there are two more productions that take place so in total by the end of the film 102 of mm. performances of the mouse trap have taken place now the this October marks the 100 so it's been 102 years since Agatha Christie published her first novel, which was the, the Mysterious Affairs Styles. So the fact that they they made a nod to Agatha Christie being mm. the, that f- her first novel novel 100, being 102 yeah. years old, plus they gave it 102 performances, was just a way for them to like honor the Countess. They literally call her the Countess of Crime, Agatha Christie. So like, there's those nods. Plus, on top of that, I don't know if you remember, there was a part in the film where they go to Scotland Yard and the the head constable says to sam rockwell's character i can't give you more detectives because we're busy with the rillington place murders yeah, so right. i'll give you and then he gives her Sir Sharon and yeah and he's like oh. but now mm. the rillington place murders is ac- an actual thing so what happened was john christie it's weird it? that, that his name it's not he's not related to agatha christie uh, well i don't know actually because they both have the surname christie but anyway john christie murdered at least eight people including his wife ethel by strangling them in his flat at 10 rillington place notting hill london (laughs) the bodies of three of christie's victims were found in a wallpaper covered kitchen um alcove soon after he had moved out of rillington place during march 1953 now there was a movie made about his life called 10 Rillington Place, right? And it was made in 1971. It's a a crime drama. And John Christie was played by Richard Attenborough, right? That's right. Now, Richard Attenborough is a character in this film. He is the, you know, the main actor in the theater who still adopts the limp after Sam Rockwell's character comes to visit him? Yeah. He so he's in other words not the not the actual actor Richard Attenborough as in someone uh, I think his name something Harris plays Richard Attenborough but Richard Attenborough originally did play um in the Mouse Trap he yeah. did play the lead r- oh, detective cool. role in the the Mouse Trap yeah. and soon after later went to play um John Christie in Ten Rillington Place so he switched roles from being a detective in a in a murder mystery to actually being the the serial killer within a a crime drama yeah. and that was i think a, it was a series but i thought that was that so they also brought in there's literally like real life references and even like real life situations that that took place within this film they really drew yeah. up the connections yeah so um and then also like for example this was just smart what they did so the you know Sam Rockwell's character had a limp yeah, and then Richard, so the character he Richard, picked it up. yes, he was like, "Oh, where'd you get your limp? That's did you get it from limp? the war? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to adopt that." And then he adopted. So what they did was they actually and gave, even announced it. Yes, I have a detective with a something limp. Limp, I got it in the war. <laughs> <laughs> and this basically what it does is subconsciously it gives us the audience the perception that the two men are alike. And I don't know if you remember in the chase where Saoirse Ronan is is trying to chase or finds Sam Rockwell in the theatre. Mm. She's still runs and tackles 
the the character Richard Et- Et- yeah. yeah Edinburgh and then says oh sorry I thought you were Sam Rockwell yeah. but they they'd, they'd already set up the fact that the two of them do look similar yeah. by the fact that he adopted the limp and so like it was ah. just it was smart the way they they did that and okay. then also the the producer wolf his name was something wolf he was yeah. the one having the affair he was an actual film producer as well so the, those two characters are actually real life the character, characters right? yes yeah, yeah, yeah. The, but they were actually mm. so um richard is an actual actor mm. in fact he was in the first jurassic parks that's ah, richard right, yeah. yeah the older the older gentleman in jurassic park yeah the, he was in those films now how about that hmm. and then this was my favorite part i think okay i think it was my favorite part so the ending of this film i'm not giving i'm not there's no spoiler yeah, in this shame we're not going to yeah but the ending of this film takes place exactly as the director that adrian Bro- uh, broody plays his name was Kopernik. so um it takes place exactly how he storyboarded it earlier on in the film. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, that's right. Yes. So basically, what happens is early on in the film, he's like, "No, this is how I but want the film to end," that, and he literally like, there's yes. There's that small bit of a just because you're like, "Oh no," that means because the person that yes. But like, yeah. And then yeah. what happened was the director, Tom, he wanted to film the end of the film first because then he said it would be easy to now just go and storyboard the end of the film that's mm. already been filmed. But unfortunately, due to sh- uh, scheduling conflicts, they couldn't do that. So what they had to do is they literally had to sit down and storyboard both scenes and then try and keep them as accurate as possible to one another. And then obviously they had to film the scene where Adrian is busy saying, okay, this is what then the gun comes in the... And then he goes to the the storyboard, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they obviously had to film the end of the film with Chad the car chase and the the, the shootouts and all of that. But I love that. Like I've never seen that in any movie yeah. I've ever watched. I was just like, they showed us the storyboard to I the end of like, the film before the film ended. Oh, it was yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, gee, gee, that I, was so good. I was just like, wait, wait. Is he gonna? No, she's not gonna. Wait, is this? The, wait, what does that all mean? <laughs> wait, what's going on? So that was it was. In, insane the other thing I loved about this film was Agatha Christie was an actual character in the movie mm. you know during the film uh, right in the beginning when the director explains the whole so I loved him and Adrian did such a good job at him he did he almost gives this bit of a uh, like like uh, explanation or yeah a, a, a definition about what a murder, murder, murder mystery is mm. you know you get the the suspect and then like the person that it actually was is like the least expected type mm. of thing and he still he still like says how he hates it like yes. the cliche of a murder mystery <laughs> yeah like during the film because everyone's now s- a suspect mm. and like it's it's crazy because the way that i saw that was like like a camera that is connected to a live feed that's pointed at the television that the camera feeds giving a, <laughs> yes. you know, you get, yes. you start getting that liquid. There's like the play and then there's like the actual movie that you're yeah. watching. And then, so, so there's the murder mystery within the play and exactly. then there's the murder mystery of the, and, and then the play is about the, the, yeah. the whole plot. Do you know what's also insane? So the, the mousetrap is a real murder mystery play um, by Agatha Christie and it premiered at the, th- the theater Royal in Nottingham mm. on the 6th of October, 1952 and has continued continued to run to this day making it the longest running play in the world so richard attenborough and his wife sheila sim who both are in this movie the characters were the first actors to play um sergeant trotter and molly R- ralston respectively and a film adaption was announced in 1959 to be produced by edward small and victor seville for united artists and it would have starred tyron power and maria Schall. Mm. but the film was never made and Small produced the previous Christie adaption witness for the prosecution in 1957. There eventually were two film versions of the play, um, but as portrayed in the film, the mousetrap cannot be made into an English language film until at least six months after it has closed on the West End and the longest break between shows was 14 months during the COVID-19 pandemic, but then it resumed again after that. 
So literally the they, mousetrap is still playing to this day. Yeah. So that's why they haven't been able to make a film, The Mousetrap. You know, if you think about it, they kind of did it clever because they, did. they haven't made a film about The Mousetrap, but they've made a film about The Mousetrap. Yes. Think and do you know it. why it's called See How They Run? Because no, you know the nurse. Okay, you. so Agatha Christie had she was well known for naming her her novels after nursery rhymes, right? That uh. she said she she liked to take like this the innocence of a, a nursery rhyme and turn it almost into like this bloody affair of murder and oh. mystery and yeah. But now wow. three blind mice. Mm. The second line in the in the nursery rhyme is "See how they run," yeah. and that's why they named this film "See how they run." Yeah, I was just like, see how yeah, we run. <laughs> all the victims, all the suspects in opposite directions. Yeah. Wow. But I thoroughly, this film, honestly. It's actually a very light, a light-hearted It crime. is. But at the same time, it's, it wa- still th- it's still got like thrilling moments. Like especially at the yeah. end, you're like. Because <gasps> it was l- like, like the person and the motive. You're just like, what? Really? <laughs> Okay. Did you get? I didn't get it. <laughs> I actually didn't get. I didn't guess who the murderer was. And watching um, interviews with the cast members and even other people that had watched the film, they also were like, they, they, they didn't. They had like speculations, but they were all. I think I was so entertained about just the, the whole story. production and yeah, and the story and everything that I, I was just like, it, it didn't really wasn't really focused there. And like I said, while well, we were about halfway through the film already, I actually wanted to go and listen again in the beginning. To what he said. Uh, to that whole, because I was like, wait, maybe the clue's there, because it's like. How brilliant, though, was that when he gets killed, the director? So there's obviously the mannequin with the coats and the hats, and then he walks up to it, and like you're already like on edge, mm. and then it's just a mannequin. Then he turns around, and when he turns back, there's the killer yeah. in the coat. That was brilliantly done. And then when he runs to the stage door, and it's obviously the brick, you're just like, ah! And then when she says he was killed in the, the costume room and then put here on the stage and then she's like what it was staged or what <laughs> oh yes yeah no pun intended there yeah yes, sir. but Sir Sharon was very good and I uh, watched interviews where she actually said because this is she hasn't done a lot of comedy in her career um which is what intrigued her about this project mm. and she said she loves the comedy genre so she's like the mm. fact that she got to be in this but she said there are a lot of comedic actors within this so it was quite nerve-wracking for her to pull off and that's actually why she stuck with her Irish accent because she said to the director I need to use my normal accent for this so that I can actually focus on like like delivering the because comedy is all about how you deliver the line if you don't deliver it in the right way it's not going to be funny and mm. so it's it's quite a, it's quite a bit of a, a job to to get right but she honestly was the funniest character for me she was so d- the fact that she she was mm. so nervous and like she was so right and everyone was funny i mean the whole cast was brilliant but she really did do a good job with like leading the comedy and I, I'm glad she stuck with the Irish accent because it did add I to the character. It. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I was so distracted by by everything else, like mm. her character and that, and Sam Rockwell. Uh, he, and he's American. He's yeah. not British. Him, him, and Adrian were the yeah. only two Americans to be in this film. Adrian kept his uh, American accent because he was a failed uh, American Hollywood director well, that left. Well, yeah, I, I was very curious about his um, about why he's got an American accent. But uh, if you remember, Sa- Sam Rockwell was the wolf in um, uh, Bad Guys. In the, in Bad Guys yeah. as well. So he was also in Frost Nixon. I actually didn't realize yeah, he was right. in Frost Nixon, that's and he was right. in Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. When I saw the films, I was also like, "Wait, what?" Yes, he's a good actor. Yeah. And then I was watching in an interview with Jimmy Kimmel. He was interviewed because obviously in this, his character, he's a drunk detective. That's like his role. I love his. I love his costume. Like like. The, the the yeah the the costumes and everything yeah. was no the costumes were they were very yeah. very good and he said so Jimmy was asking like what's your method for acting drunk and he said someone I can't remember who he said now but he someone gave him the advice to go to a bar but not order alcohol to order like a coffee or coke or something and then to watch drunk people because obviously you have to pick up their mannerisms mm. and then he 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 gave a few tips like he said what some people do is they'll they'll lean their body to one side and then try and walk straight. So obviously that will give you like that unsure sensation. But then another actor was like watching it 
someone else said you must relax your body before so he was on set the one day relaxing his body and this guy called him over and he was like simple solution to acting drunk he said bend over like completely bend over stand up quickly and this is just before they say action stand up quickly you'll be completely dizzy and then just do the scene that was his advice for for him acting drunk so i was like we have suppose that would uh, do the trick you know <laughs> guys try it after our podcast it, and just make sure there's like a medic on hand yeah, you know? yeah. just in case we don't want you like passing out and dying i had a friend who, who something like that happened to him once and we lived in a in, in a house with a wooden floor oh yeah uh he <laughs> he jumped out of bed very quickly and i just heard <laughs> 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 and then when i looked at him his name was byron i looked at him I'm like byron <laughs> he's still out and then eventually like shook his head and he came to it <laughs> And he's like, I'm sorry, I stood up too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, make sure that that doesn't happen yeah, to you. Yeah, just be careful. All right. That's why. Like, there are medics on a film set, so... In fact, we do not... Um, I'm just telling you what he did and yeah. what he was advised to do we if did, he needed to act drunk. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. We, 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 I would try it. If I had to act drunk, I would try that. You can try that. I'll probably try that. But we do not advise <laughs> any... Do at your own risk, people. Any, do not try this at home. Any... Now I pointed your camera. Any. Of our viewers, <laughs> please don't do this. But if you want to, <laughs> give it a try and just comment. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I thoroughly, uh, as much so as wait, I've hated. On. Relax your body. No, no, no. Forget the relax your body. It's not that part. He said right? to, yeah, he just was like, bend he down, just bend down just and stand it. up quickly. Like as they say, action. <laughs> like literally just stand up. Because then sure, you'll feel dizzy. And make sure that there's no one in front of you when you come Ooh, up. Oh, yeah, no shame. Yeah, but this film, okay, cool. as much as I've hated, to honestly hated 2022 films, like there's a few exceptions. This film was brilliant. Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Does film. that mean that Sam Rockwell has never been drunk before? No, I think he has. But, but as in they say, how does he? They saying oh, on how, set, how, how you do don't you get act, drunk. How do you act drunk? Yeah, don't do and like as an drunk. actor. It's extremely unprofessional yeah, to get drunk true. in order to be drunk because you can you you can act drunk and be like silly yeah. but now you have to like really be yeah and the thing is you've got to deliver lines yeah. so now you can't be drunk because like you're working okay. like don't drink look on the guys, job look i tell you what i'm going to be a friend okay i'm going to help you out next time you got to act drunk all right i'm going to give you johnny depp's number because <laughs> you know um just hang on yeah johnny, johnny depp's just used to being drunk johnny johnny depp oh sorry <laughs> sorry i've got my own friend name for him you know we call each other you know <laughs> right Mr. So while while Ryan's um Mr. Depp, there he is. There's, there's, Mr. Depp. there's that's his number. That, that's your friend name, Mr. Depp. <laughs> there's his number right there. Mm -hmm. If you cannot see his number right now, it means you are not watching the, Just the give him YouTube a call. show. He's gonna advise you on there that. I know go. because we talk about these things all the time, man. But having said that, go and watch this film and don't mm. spoil the end for others. Yeah, like we just we just didn't. Mm. Very good. But very good film. An absolutely entertaining film. Mm. Loved it. My kids passed out, so it was really good. <laughs> but me and my watch, me and my watch, me and my me and my watch, wiped it thoroughly, wiped it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> welcome, right? <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah. She didn't get that one. I'm sure they got it. All right. Yeah. So this has been the movie show on Active FM. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>